Maccabim Shelishi, three Maccabees, one. Now, Philopater, on learning from those who came back that Antiochus had made himself master of the places which belonged to him, sent orders to all his footmen and horsemen, took with him as his sister Arsino, and marched out as far as the parts of Raphia, where Antiochus and his forces encamped. And one Theodosius, intending to carry out his design, took with him the bravest of the men who had been before committed to his trust by Ptolemy, and got through at night to the tent of Ptolemy to kill him on his own responsibility, and so to end the war. But Dastheus, called the son of Drimlus, by birth a Yahudi, afterward a renegade from the Torah and observances of his country, conveyed Ptolemy away and made an obscure person lie down in his stead in the tent. It befell this man to receive the fate which was meant for the other. A fierce battle then took place, and the men of Antiochus prevailing, Arsino continually went up and down the ranks, and with disheveled hair, with tears and end entreaties, begged the soldiers to fight manfully for themselves, their children and women, and promised that if they proved conquerors, she would give them two minae of gold apiece. It thus fell out that their enemies were defeated in hand-to-hand -hand encounter, and that many of them were taken prisoners. Having vanquished this attempt, the king then decided to proceed to the neighboring cities and encouraged them, rather, and encouraged them. By doing this, and by making donations to their temples, he inspired his subjects with confidence. The Yahudim sent some of their council and of their elders to him, the greetings, guest gifts, and congratulations of the past, bestowed by them, filled him with the greater eagerness to visit their city. Having arrived at Yerushalayim, sacrificed and offered thanks, rather thank offerings to the great Elohim, and done whatsoever else was suitable to the sanctif rather to the sanctity of the place, and entered the inner court. He was so struck with the magnificence of the place, and so wondered at the orderly arrangements of the temple, that he considered entering the sanctuary itself. And when they told him that this was not permissible, none of the nation, no, nor even the priests in general, but only the supreme high priest of all, and he only once in a year, being allowed to go in, he would by no means give way. Then they read the Torah to him, but he persisted in obtruding himself, exclaiming that he ought to be allowed, and saying, Be it that they were deprived of this honor, I ought not to be. And he put the question, Why, when he entered all the temples, none of the priests who were present forbade him? He was through, thoroughly answered by someone that he did wrong to boast of this, well, since I have done this, said he, be the cause what it may, shall I not enter with or without your consent? And when the priests fell down in their sacred vestments, imploring the great Elohim to come and help in time of need, and to avert the violence of the fierce aggressor, and when they filled the temple with lamentations and tears, then those who had been left behind in the city were scared and rushed forth uncertain of the event. Virgins who had been shut up within their chambers came out with their mothers, scattering dust and ashes on their heads and filling the streets with outcries. Women, but recently separated off, left their bridal chambers, left the reserve that befitted them, and ran about the city in a disorderly manner. Newborn babes, rather newborn babes, were deserted by their mother by the mothers or nurses who waited upon them, 
some here, some there, in houses or in fields, these now with an ardor which could not be checked, swarmed into El Elian's temple. Various were the prayers offered up by those who assembled in this place on account of the unholy attempt of the king. Along with these, there were some of the citizens who took courage and would not submit to this rather to his obstinacy and his intention of carrying out his purpose, calling out to arms and to die bravely in defense of the Torah of their fathers. They created a great uproar in the place and were with difficulty brought back by the aged and the elders to the station of prayer which they had occupied before. During this time the multitude kept on praying. The elders who surrounded the king, strove in many ways to divert his haughty mind from the design which he had formed. He, in his hardened mood, insensible to all persuasion, was going onwards with the view of carrying out this design. Yet even his own officers, when they saw this, joined the Yahudim in an appeal to him who has all power to aid in the present crisis and not wink at such overwein- rather overweening iniquity. Such was the frequency and the vehemence of the cry of the assembled crowd that an indescribable noise ensued. Not the men only, but the very walls and floors seemed to sound forth, all things preferring dissolution rather than to see the place defiled. 